you often want to know how far a point is from another one or what are the distances from one point out towards the next point and where is the middle point of where they meet. You, you do this using Euclidean distance. It's the same concept that applies to creating vector buffers. So in buffering you can use Euclidean distance to determine the distance or you can use geodesic or planar um, algorithms to calculate the distance. So Euclidean just uses the planar ones. So when you use the Euclidean distance tool in ArcGIS Pro, you will be creating distance outwards from a point You'll see as you see them here in your screen and the output will be in a raster. So your input can be a raster or feature source data. So in this case, I'm going to select my schools. I'm going to calculate distance outwards from each school. And it's going to create areas of distances or zones around each input point. Then I will have to specify a name for my output distance raster. I can also specify a feature buried data, which is not absolutely necessary in this case. But what that would, could be, for example, is I could have a line going through the schools here, for example, that I, I, th I can theoretically not cross over. So it could be a very deep gorge or a big highway, anything like that. So I can put this in as a buried data and then distances will not go beyond that particular feature. I can also specify a maximum distance that I want to calculate for. If I don't do this, then it will simply calculate for the Earth feature extent, so the geometry extent that the feature has in the view, or you can set the environments that it will extend to another type of feature. For example, if I go to environments here, I can set the processing extent, for example, to my elevation input layer. It will use that as the extent. Output cell size as well, it will give you. Now this is based on the projection your feature layers are in. In this case, I can see that these are in a geographic coordinate system, so my output cell size will be giving me the cell size in degrees. The distance method will be planar. You can also specify geodesic here, so that's similar to the buffer tool, but I'll keep planar. And then I can also have the output, direct, output direction raster, which is optional, and output back direction raster. So when I run this tool, it's going to calculate zones of distances away from my points, um, which are my schools. In this instance, because I'm using a geographic coordinate system as my coordinate reference system in the project, you'll see that my distance goes to 0 0.6. So this is not 0 0.6 meters or anything like that. It references the distance units of your map. So this is 0 0.6 degrees, which of course is not very logical. You'll also see that this is my distance raster. It has the extent of my input TM that I said before. To illustrate the importance of using the right projection and the extent, processing extent, we run this same tool again, but this time we're going to reduce the extent and we're going to set it to the input. So it is the extent of my schools. So it will be a small extent, it will only go that far, and we're going to be using a projected format of the schools that are now in a planar projection. By using an input layer that is projected into a planar projection, you can see the output cell size is now given in meters, so 26.6 roughly. If you run this again, just give your outputs a unique name, you'll see that it actually looks very different. So now the extent is smaller, as you can see here, and your output makes a little bit more sense for us. So it's in 3,452 meters is the maximum extent from any of these points to the extent of the feature layer. And you'll see that the white lines appear to make polygon shapes around the input features. So this is basically the threshold distance between two points. So this particular point there, this particular school, Nokulunga, the distance from this school to this school over here, which is the Nyameko High School, can be given in the pixel values, as you can see here, with that threshold boundary. If you measure the distance between these two schools, you'll see that there's roughly 645 meters between the two. So the halfway point is the threshold 
where the neighborhood of the one takes over the other one. So this area is closer to this school and this area is closer to that school.